Sometimes it feels like the sun will never rise, like the birds will never sing again. That's right. When you don't know what to do, just keep on breathing. From the City of Angels in Los Angeles, welcome to all my listeners out there in Radio Land. I'm Dave, the caregiver's caregiver at caregiverdave.com. Also coming to you live and on demand 24-7 on numerous syndicated radio and podcast networks on 26 global audio and video platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, SoundCloud, Vimeo, Stitcher Radio, Blog Talk Radio, and the list goes on. In fact, we are proud to be voted number one caregiver podcast of the top 50 on Player FM and number two on Feedspot at the top 60 and number two on uh, CaringVillage.com. And we have an especially exciting show planned for you today. Maliko Sensei is passionate about helping people reach their full potential. And he's taught people of all ages from five to 105 years old. He's a black belt in Okinawa Karate Karate. With 50 years of training, wow. TV host, producer, and over 100 shows, the founder of Tri Hara Holistic Fitness and an author of The Journey of Cups. Stay grounded in your humanity, and these are extraordinary times in which we live. In response, Maliko has uh, shared ancient techniques from modern times which will help them balance their mind, heart, and body, and thereby come into more inner integration and wholeness. Before we get started, I do want to thank my last week's guest, uh, Cindy Watson, and how the art of feminine negotiation can make caregiving easier. The founder of Women on Purpose and creator of the Art of Feminine Negotiation program. And just a reminder, you can watch or listen to that interview and all our interviews, including this one on our membership website, caregiverdave.com, or any of our other 26 global networks that I mentioned earlier. All right, enough of that. Maliko, so great to have you on the Caregiver Dave Show. Aloha. It's so good to be here. I've been excited to talk to you. And I was thinking about caregivers all morning. <laughs> well, good. That means you're all primed up, ready to go. And uh, Obviously, you never know what's going to come out of here because uh, <laughs> I know it's all good, but it comes out in different ways and and because we're all different. So, and you're coming from uh, which island in Hawaii? Well, Kauai. I've been there for 13 Kauai. years. Yeah, Kauai, yeah, the northern Kauai. island. Kauai. Everybody says it differently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so uh, you are a Kapuna also, uh, an, an <laughs> elderly caregiver. I don't know. Kapuna has many different meanings, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Well, what Kapuna, is... ba- no, I'm not a Kapuna. <laughs> <I'm> a- <laughs> no, I have respect for them. They They know deeply the Hawaiian tradition. The main thing is like me being from the East and the East Coast of the United States and then uh-huh. – my whole life studying the Asian, you know, that, and then I found myself in the middle of both, right, on Kauai. Yeah. And boy, I did I do a lot of healing, a lot of growing, still sharing. And uh, yeah, I worked, yeah. So I just, uh, I teach people how to stay flexible and strong. Uh, I like to think that our sessions polish the mind. Well, that sounds good. So you're, you're a spiritual person, yes? Yes. So you are an expert on many different things, but today uh, our audience are burned out caregivers. And you know who the enemy is, is when you're burned out. It's, it's stress and burnout itself. And so what's your philosophy? How do, you, how do you fix someone who's just burned out, got stress coming out of their nose and their eyes and their ears? What's, mm-hmm. what's the recipe? Well, I think that the humble recipe is that I don't do anything. I suggest things. I've known they, that, that they work for me and they've worked for hundreds, if not thousands of others over the years. And uh, so if they listen and they want to know more about the uh, the Journey of Cups, the Journey of Cups is a metaphor for the human being. That's why I said it's an exploration of being human in this 21st century. We're dealing with so much, but at the same time, we have all these different amazing uh, practices, techniques, theory about life on the planet, which is totally different than how, you know, 
people in our culture, in our society, we're all the work and, you know, what we have. And, and then that locks them in. But when you do these practices and you ground, that's why I learned on Kauai, you know, when you ground, you're connecting with the Aina. The yeah. Aina is the, you know, Mama Kauai, you know, that that's the energy of the land. You could do that wherever you are. And uh, if you're on the third floor and you're in the bathroom, you might have to have a big imagination to get down there, let alone being on the hundredth floor. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're thinking about having roots. Well, first of all, we need to come and all the caregivers out there, I'm speaking to you, that, you know, you need to come to grips with why you're doing what you're doing. And you also need to come to grips with, you know, most of the caregivers, if not all the caregivers that I know, have a huge heart and they need to touch that heart in them then you do get burnt out and then you have to ask yourself why i'm overwhelmed well did you think you haven't stopped in three months did you think that everyone else around you is more important than you you know when the well is dry you have nothing to give so if you and and this is it david if you look at it um energetically every day no matter what goes on even if we have great days but you know how it is so you know we're going up and down and i think as we get older and more mature we realize that i don't have to get that intense about this and then we have to check in with ourselves so my point is is that every day we are being bombarded by chi energy you know it's like our relationships our work our career our worry you know the COVID came in let's talk about reintegrating into life beyond the pandemic because some people are still dealing with the pan pandemic i know hawaii is you know they keep a, sending me these bulletins these so these pandemic bulletins i never said really uh, the rest of the country has like moved on and hawaii is still in this 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 mental state of mind you know well i guess when they get they, hey they have a lot more visitors yeah. than we do <clears throat> who knows where they're coming from and i don't know yeah. if it's par paranoia or if it's just sure. real, you know they don't so even want fruit or bugs or pets coming in you know they're they're very careful well yeah now yeah 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 of course yeah but you so know how do you how do you reintegrate into life you know when when COVID has thrown you off kilter. You got to come home to yourself. That's my message here. Come home to yourself. And then say to everyone, after me, you come first. Yeah. And that, that's a tough one to swallow, you know, because, oh, then Sounds I'm being... selfish, yeah. I was just going to say that, you know, we feel so... <laughs> oh, but, we you were... know, even the Bible, you know, a lot, of, a lot of these caregivers are religious or Christians, uh, Catholic, whatever. And... Um, you know, I say that the Bible says that you cannot love someone unless you love yourself. Love others as you love yourself. You don't love yourself. How the heck are you going to love somebody else? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, what, I'm that's <laughs> what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm what I'm saying is <laughs> let's sleep in front of our own door. We have no business going over there to help them and them because we want to distract ourselves from what we're doing. All these care caregivers out there, and that's why I'm talking to you, is that do go to a Tai Chi class or a Qi Kong class. If you feel like you got a lot of angst and you got a little gusto, then go to a martial art class. Go uh, to uh, the slowdown. Um, a oh, lot I'm of people so don't know what you're talking about. So why don't you explain what Tai Chi is? No, Tai Chi is an old form, thousands of years old from China, and it's uh, a way of channeling energy. And Qi Gong is more about cultivating energy. So if we look give us, at... Give us a little demonstration. I mean, how? what does that mean? How do they channel energy? You know, how long does it take? How, how hard is it to learn? And, and, you know, is it practical for everybody? That's what I did, right? Uh -huh. So in 50 years, you know, my mainstay, right, still to now, is uh, 50 years, you know, I'm a master black belt in two different styles of karate, but yoga, tai chi, breath work, med I, I just been teaching my whole life, so I have no, no more labels in a way. It's just that this is about opening up to our own human potent uh, potential, and half of it is physical, so that we can actually release because 
energetically, whatever goes on, someone hurts your feelings, you're like, why do you say that? And then all day you're gnawing on it or, or so, you know, how it goes. But when do you actually do a movement to release it, to clear, you know, clear the body energetically, metaphorically, then when you're empty, right now we fill the cup. And that is reach out to the great universe. We're all part of the infinite universe. And as caregivers, you need to have a little bit more strength than the person sitting behind the desk, you know, uh, you know, doing doing their thing. So and then energy getting out. And then when we start moving, the- your body is a big thing. If you're sitting down, stand up. If you're standing up, walk around jump up and down you know do something slap yourself you believe in that too (laughs) yeah we call it dough in no that's actually a practice (laughs) and when you do it on the head and you see how your hands are here and it goes down dun dun like here Uh it opens things up and then in your mind two hands otherwise i'll be unbalanced no but just tap around it really does help i mean it sounds weird well, the thing is, if you close your eyes, you're going to feel more. My teacher, George Leonard, said that when you close your eyes, you open up 70 to 80 feedback circuits in your whole uh, body. So just you by really- closing your eyes. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. why blind people are so sensitive to other things. All of the other senses get heightened. That's another miracle of the body because if one, something shuts mm-hmm. down, then you have to develop other capacities. Whether it's with your body, your arms, your legs, your 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 voice, your eyes, your ears, it, it's like I've had so much joy sharing with all these elders over the years. You know, when I was working in Seattle, I was in ten different retirement homes, and I would go uh, twice a week, two, three of the places it was once a week, but the other six or seven were twice a week so i'd show up monday morning here and then on thursday and then i the afternoon i do my second morning class and in the afternoon i travel over to west seattle do uh, my little are, are they open are these elderly people in the nursing homes are they are they glad to see you because it's me i'm a goofball <laughs> i'm a goofball i'm strong enough now to be a goofball because I've been always trying to pe- please people. I don't know if you've ever been in that thing, and I know a lot of caregivers are, and I don't know it's about the self, but it's like, oh, if people, you know, I'm always caring. And, it, you know, like it gets you in a trap. I had a friend of mine and said, he said, won't you cut your hair? And I said, all right, Jimmy, he's my oldest friend from JC, right? And, you know, we know each other 56, eight years. We, oldest friend, you know, I'm calling my parents, my brothers are dead, everyone, you know. But, uh, and he said to me, will you cut that effing hair? I said, I'll tell you what, Jimmy, when you grow hair, I'll, I'll cut mine. <laughs> uh, you got to have so, a little. So what um, tips and techniques can you teach people, like, you know, who are watching or listening right now, that they can actually just try this? Uh, now, you gave us uh, something, the tapping on the head. That's pretty good. Moving around, you know, kind of like your your uh, swatting flies and stuff. Uh, what other things can they do that will really get uh, their mind shifted? Because stress is on them, right? And right. Uh, I always say, you know, you can't stop the birds from flying around your head, but you can stop them from making a nest in your hair if you have any. And, and uh, you know, stress is kind of the same way. There, everyone's going to have stress. You can't get rid of stress. You know, the, well, the world is full of stress. Life is stress. So how do you keep the stress birds from building a nest in your hair? Give us some techniques, some practical take-home application. So I'm going to talk you through this, but I'm actually going to do it. All right. So I'm going to have to shift the camera, and then I'll sure. give you a main minute, so I have two or three. Yeah. To, all right, good. All right, then we, and I hope you do it with us. You don't have to, but <laughs> give me. Yeah, they have to. I'm making them do it. <laughs> this is where I teach my sometimes my black belt classes. Guys, oh, wow. like, we're going to get a demonstration here. That's good. So, no, very basic. I'm going to take this off. <clears throat> but very basic. You're and- in good shape for an old guy, you know? Most guys your age look like hell. Hey. <clears throat> I went to a, uh, a tournament in New Jersey on Saturday, just uh, what a few days back. 
And all these guys came up. I couldn't remember. I didn't recognize. It was like a 40th uh, <laughs> school or college reunion. Really? Yeah, I just really? went to my 50th. Oh, okay. Oh. And a lot of them didn't look too good. Uh, many of them have died. <laughs> well, I know. I know. I mean, I, I feel, anyway, everything is good. So, right. what, you know, what we want to do is you want to stand with your kind of your feet straight and you bend your knees a little bit like you settle, like a house right. settles, a tree settles. And then for the caregivers, so even if the people are home now and you're doing it, just stand up, look down at your feet, keep them straight, bend your knees, and then just start to wiggle your hands. So you're not shaking your hands big. We're yeah. going very light. Well, you're wiggling the whole arm from the from yeah. the shoulder down. See, from here. And then, especially if you feel a lot of tension and tightness in the neck, you squeeze your, 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 your shoulders all the way up. And you give yourself, I don't know if you could see that, but you're giving yourself a little you're raising bit. your shoulders, kind of like you're saying, I don't know. But then yeah. you're rotating. You're rotating. Yeah, because Right. When I'm rotating, it's going down, going crack, crack, crack on, on, on the spine. Yeah. Right. So I'm up. Clavicles. And in here, I'm making it more tense and I come back and then you let go. So you inhale up and then you exhale <sighs> down. Yeah, and that then feels you, good. And you could do it sitting down without rocking forward and back. You're isolating just as... See, it's all the little things that really help when they learn. That's why I'm telling people, go out and find a, I don't know, some kind of massage school or something. But now, you know, keep moving forward is the second thing that we could do is from there, I'm trying to... Something popped up on my screen. So from here, this is the good one. You just come up like this. Yeah. And what? Huh. You see what I did? I When I come down like that, there's a slight jolt. But when I come up like this, I'm thinking of all the things that aggravate me. You know, like my husband, my wife, my, you know, my boss, my, you know, me. I bought myself. Either way, and you're carrying it up there, you're like, I'm done. And you okay, imagine so you got all your stuff up. You put your shoulders up like like you're saying, I don't know. I don't care. And all of a sudden, you bounce and it all goes down. Yeah, in, in the relaxing mode. Now, and when you go down, you don't, you don't, uh, bounce you don't, a little. No, you don't collapse. When you I go down, bounce, bang, bounce you, a little. No, yeah, yeah, but bang, and all of a sudden you're big on the inside. I see. I mean, that happens over time, and people aren't going to do that. Another one that we do is we stretch this way, right? Because this is again for the spine. Hard to do when you're sitting down this one, but then middle. Right, that's for the heart. And then they can lift up the veil, right? They can lift up the veil and then just come down. Like, in other words, you know, like they say, sometimes we use the expression, turn your skin inside out. So all those little, you know, because what it is, and you probably anyway agree, is these micro tensions that build up. And then when we get pain, uh, we're not listening. Right. When we get pain, uh, energy is being blocked and energy can be blocked in one of two ways. It could be blocked by overdoing it and, you, you know, you stress or it could be like you just, uh, you know, everything. Sedimentary. Yeah. And then, it, you know, it becomes stagnant. So the other thing is once you do the arms, right, then you do the leg and you shake that off. You do the Uchi Gucci. You know, you get the shoulders going. Yeah. Uh -huh. And watch, this is the big one, David, is you come up this way and you, uh, like you're taking off a tight sweater, like you're taking off that crap that you... Starting from the feet. Oh, that's, uh, you can't see, but I was covering my feet. Yeah, I because if, if you miss that pinky toe, it might yeah. be... Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you're not going to have a clean thing. So, yeah. yeah. Is this what you call the holistic fitness and exploring the gym within. Yeah, yes, yes. You're not using any equipment. You're just kind of doing it yourself. Oh, it, it is so Body is the machine. Well, if you think about it, and... Excuse me one second. And breathing is so important, right? The breath of yeah. life. Amen. See, because it's like when we... What I've learned and what I share... 
is when you learn to coordinate your breath with your movement, uh, you're more integrated. And when you are aware of your feet, when you're doing something with your hands, you're more integrated. So the question I ask people is your mind in your body or is your body in your mind? Hmm. Now, what does diet have to do with this? Because we put things in our mouth, right? Say it and again. A diet. We put things in our mouth yeah. and they come out of our body. And, you know, the body keeps what it wants and it gets rid of what it doesn't want. What should we be eating as caregivers? Uh, are there foods that are more prone to make us more stressful, less stressful? Well, yeah. I mean, if you eating- obviously you should drink a lot of water, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of yeah. soda. <laughs> I think, you know, I'm, I'm at a different level now. People say you're macrobiotic. I was macrobiotic for a long time. I what was does veg- that mean, macrobiotic? Uh, it's a different kind of diet where it's, you know, mainly brown rice and then always some green ve- steamed vegetables and some beans or whatever, you know, miso soup. Um, like vegetarian, and- you mean? Well, yeah, yeah, but it's with that rice. Vegetarian don't care if you have rice or not, you know. So, uh, you know, more salads, more things like that. But, um, but no, now I'm macro chaotic. Yeah, that sounds funny. What does that mean? <laughs> it means everything in moderation. Now, in ideal, I say moderate, and sometimes you're not. So you learn. But the idea is to be alert, to be alive, and to feel and reflect is how is your mind field? Have you been positive? <clears throat> have you been waking up on the uh, bright side of the day? You know, are you, have you been worried a lot? Have You know, but just see what is... Well, the word chaotic, which is part of the word you said, well, we know the definition of that means it's just everything's going crazy. Uh, no, no association with that or just happens to be the name no no well it's funny that you say you're asking me to go deeper down yeah. the rabbit hole. no that's a good question Taking deep here folks <laughs> no no say that again ask me that again so macro cha- chaotic is that what you chaotic. said you said yeah well, chaotic then, and then, chaotic means you know god there's chaos all around me it's like i'm the eye of the hurricane right we know in the eye of the hurricane there's peace and calm even though all around the hurricane is chaos. <laughs> right. Macro chaotic is just you go with what you feel. You don't worry about any rules, any structure, anything. And it can flip and flop and change. Sometimes you, you sometimes you have seasons that you have for six months, a year, 10 years, whatever. But then you're absolutely opposite. You know, that's why I tell people, you know, to question your belief system from time to time. It's really important because the things, some people don't even think that whatever they were thinking three years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago is what they're still thinking now and never challenge that to say, do I really believe that now? Have I grown? Do I have a different perception on reality and how I could be more intelligent on how I I care for others? You know, like set set my put myself in the schedule. Get a massage, you know, once every two weeks or whatever. You know, if the if the body's working hard, you know, treat it. You know, and so, you know, my whole thing is back when I started this, nineteen ninety five. I called the I, I I coined going to the gym within and try hard holistic. At that time, I called well being. It's the same thing, fitness, and uh, it's such a uh, My understanding of the mind, heart, and body, especially when it's integrated and aligned on the same page, we might say, friends with each other. (laughs) You know, we got the we we got aspects of ourselves. You know, now of course we have the spirit that is there all the time, and we actually are spirit. So if we can drop into that mind spirit, this might be too heavy, but if we could drop into that mind spirit and be the observer. Be the observer of what's going on or the way you uh, on the way that you're thinking, how you're feeling. Oh, uh, I'm not going to talk to you. I remember you gave me a bad remark last time. How are we going to keep growing? You got to be willing to get hurt. You know, we're all like this. I, I was like a martial arts man. I just, you know, nobody gets, you know, you don't, you don't come into my field, bro. No, uh, yeah, I'm, 
You're, a, fun, you're a, a, a joy to have on. You're just a, a lot of energy. And uh, I can't believe how fast this, this time has gone. We're already out of time. But um, if somebody wants to get a hold of you or uh, do you have a book or something? It's coming. Yeah, I'm it's hoping. Coming. Next, uh, well, in What's the, the name couple? of it? Do you know the name of it yet? Well, it could. Not yet. Journey, Journey of Cups. That's initially an exploration of being a human in the 21st century. Come, uh, Be grounded in your humanity. So, but then, you know, mastering the gym within is what my course is. You know, if they go to trihara, T R I H A R A dot com, and then you'd see my website, and there's a, a course that I'm offering. I worked right. hard on that. And all the pictures in the background, everything mostly is Hawaii, you know, the yeah. ocean, uh, shipwreck. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I'm, because, you know, I'm we're part of nature. That, that, that's yeah. my. This is a philosophy that's oozing out and trying to make intelligence of it only so other people can understand. But, you know, we're, we're, we're just in this miracle of life if we look at it that way. And we're getting worn down. You know, the, here's an acronym for the listeners, for your audience. HALT. Anytime you feel yourself starting to get edgy with anyone, even including yourself, you know, you hear yourself battering yourself, say, halt. Am I hungry? Ask yourself four questions. Am I hungry? Am I angry? <laughs> Am I lonely? Am I tired? And if you can answer yes to any of them, then stop what you're doing. Take care of that aspect and then go back at it. <laughs> ah, so like much, a hierarchy of needs. Yeah. So, you know, I, I look at it like we go to a buffet. You know, you don't want to eat the same thing all the time. Oh, I'm, I'm in the mood for, you know, rice and veggies. Other time I want to sell someone else. I want salmon. You know, <laughs> we don't know. But when you come in, that's what I do. I, I, I. I don't. I, I was taught this a long time ago. You know, 15 years old, I'm teaching in front of 10, 20, 30 kids. Well, it, it, you did a great show. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. And to my listeners out there, just remember that all our live shows become recorded pod and video cast on your favorite platforms. And incidentally, my newly released book, Secrets from the Hammock, Uncommon Wisdom for Uncommon Times, spreading wisdom all over the world. It's available wherever books are sold and also on my free membership website, caregiverdave.com join my caregiver dave facebook community of thirty-four thousand caregivers where you'll learn all about my new caregiver wellness retreat and mastermind in beautiful acapulco that i offer to burned out caregivers we're just trying to keep oh, wow. as many of those caregivers alive since 30 percent of them are dying and if you click or the follow <laughs> button or the like button whatever platform you're watching this on um, it helps us reach even more caregivers, improving Google search engine algorithms. So thank you again, all my listeners out there all over the world for tuning in every Wednesday and making us the number one caregiver podcast on the internet. So until next week, same time, same channel. May God richly bless you all. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. It's Dave Nassani, otherwise known as Caregiver Dave. And I'm coming to you live from this beautiful Acapulco Villa, which I like to say is the perfect prescription for caregiver burnout. And I have a unique opportunity to bring 14 burned out caregivers up here so that they can decompress and do all the things that they need to do. But this is just a bonus. It actually comes with the six month Zoom coaching program. It's a one-on-one -on -one consult with me, Caregiver Dave, to identify where you are and where you need to go. It's a six monthly small group coaching sessions to smash any obstacles between you and your ideal vision of what a caregiver needs to be and caregiver success. You get my three free books and instructions on boundaries, grief, self-care, organization, asking for help, learning how to say no, avoiding burnout, avoiding depression, avoiding perfectionism, avoiding isolation, avoiding resentment, delegation, team building, how to have fun, how to have no guilt, the importance of gratitude, and after caregiving, when you're no longer a caregiver. But this seven day bonus is absolutely free. It comes with the coaching program that you pay for. And the food is all inclusive. I'm telling you, seven days and seven nights here, 
is amazing. This is truly paradise. And I highly recommend it. For more information, go to caregiverdave.com. That's going to send you to my other website. And if you want a shortcut to get there immediately, just go to acapocodave.com. Thanks again. I look forward to seeing you in Acapulco. Sometimes it feels like the sun will never rise, like the birds will never sing.